Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Well, today we've got part two with my dear friend Simon Runting. Simon and I used to work in newspapers in London together. Uh, we've travelled the world uh, just having fun. And uh, I never knew that Simon was so into bird photography. I thought it was just something that he found when he moved to New Zealand. As you'll agree from episode one, his photographs are astounding. Um, he's given us a great insight. In this episode, he gives us an even better insight into his techniques and the equipment needed to be a bird wildlife photographer. Um, I promise you, no chicken curry story in this one, but I hope you enjoy anyway. So sit back and here we go. Take it away, Simon. Oh, oh that's one of my you favorite. My heart with love. Yeah. And it's a cool picture, isn't it? It reminds me of a sort of a Damien Hurst stuffed animal thing you know with all the skull covered in diamonds or something but yeah that's a again you know out in the rain and poor little grumpy duck sat there uh, waiting for it to stop yeah uh you, this will be in your um exhibition right probably will be actually i don't know quite know what theme i'm going to go on on yet but um there's a strong chance that that'll be in there yeah maybe you could go on birds or something oh well, yeah that's a good idea i'll take you write that down hang on <laughs> <laughs> take some notes <laughs> i knew this would be educational <laughs> yeah. hey i'm here to help bud you're a good man um so what shadow would this be would this be like 160 160th or something like that or uh, yeah it's, it's yeah it's, it's it, yeah i think you're almost bang on actually it was sort of one two fifth somewhere around that just get a little bit a little bit of movement in the in the uh, raindrops yeah so the light was pretty low as well so it didn't have a huge amount of choice but uh yeah Oh, just a beautiful, great shot. That, yeah, and that orange eye is just just pops out of that black bird as well. It great. really does, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. he does look grumpy. Yeah, <laughs> he certainly does. <laughs> I've never looked at bird's eyes so closely before. Oh, is this that same lens, the Sony lens? Um, that you um, I can't remember what that one was on. Um, I think it might have been Fuji, actually. Fuji 100-400 again. Yeah, that does a similar thing to the background. Yeah. Yeah, right. I really, my um, 400 two eights in getting serviced at the moment, and so uh, I've got a bit of spare time on the weekends. I might have to get it out, I think. Yeah, drag it out. Yeah. This is what I was saying with the birds running along the beach. You've got to make them sort of look good so the legs are good so they're not sort of upright and stuff. You add a little bit of movement to it, and you can just see the little droplets coming off its back leg there as such, but... It's incredible. Yeah, I do. I see what you mean is, you know, you treat it like, you know, like anything you photograph, yeah. you want them to look, want them yeah. to look good. Mm. Oh, this is the head shaking. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you've got to, and they do it so fast, but I've worked out these birds now. I can almost tell what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. So, yeah, they just they come in and after a you know catching an eel or something and sit on a rock and preen and just line them up and and let them do their thing. But what game's... sort of bird is this? Sorry, what sort of bird is this? That's uh, pied shag. It is a shag. Yeah, I was I was going to have a guess at that and show my my. Oh, there you go. Look, okay, you're an expert already, look. <laughs> I know, right? This is this is really uh, like everyone else out there. We're all learning a lot from you today, yeah. so. Um, I really do appreciate it. And it's the same bird? That's the same bird, yeah. Yeah. It's, it almost looks like dragon with the hook beak and stuff. And the, and the feathers have an almost a scale-like look to them as well. Oh, really? Do, do you do much post-processing? No, very, very little. Mo I try and get it right when I shoot it. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, with the light and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that's one reason. And B is uh, I'm not very good at Photoshop, so... <laughs> So yeah, same did, here. Yeah. I do a radial and that's about it and a bit of tonal contrast. Yeah, I just pull the shadows up a bit here and there, but other than that. Mm. And you shoot raw and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. This is great. Look at that. Oh, it's getting, it, getting the light right with these things. I mean, there's, there's been no, there's no Photoshopping done there. They're just getting the exposure right and <laughs> shooting it so the background is dark in a certain spot on the lake. So there's no... You know, I haven't cut the background out there or anything. That is as is. And that's a black swan, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm getting good at this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's three out of three so far. That's good. I'm taking notes. Yeah, good. I'll be happy with that. Good. Oh, there you are. Mm. In sure. action. Yeah. That's uh, what I've got on there. A lot of the time, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll dress for the conditions. I've got, I wear fishing waders an awful lot. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Keep myself Gore Tex waders uh, and boots. Uh, and I mean, I've even got dry tops and things like that as well. So if I'm laying in about six inches of water or mud or something, I'll put fishing waders on and a dry top over the, over the top of that. Oh, wow. Mm. So, I mean, you basically went through it then, but what's the, the must have gear? Um, um for, for, you know, for a bird photographer, if you, I mean, if you're that. starting out, what do you, what do you need? Um, just be prepared to get, you know, the main, the trick is really is to get to the bird's level and, and, to, and to do that. Um, it's all right if you're in a park and things like that, you're not going to get too muddy, but you know, on a beach where you're going to get wet or, or a swamp or a mud flat where most of the birds hang out, you've got to be prepared to get, you know, wet and muddy. So you just got to dress for that. I mean, there's great gear around nowadays, hunting gear and fishing gear. So for a reasonable price, you can you kit yourself up with some, you know, decent waders and, and waterproof top and and, and, and you're, you're good to go, really. Do you wear a ghillie suit at all? No. I, I um, Because you've still got a camera then that's exposed. So it just looks like, a, you know, the camera's moving magically around. But I, I use the thing called a, um, a bag blind, which is basically like a, a thin sleeping bag. I've got one here, actually. Oh, if, as if by magic. You, you pop this thing over the top of you. So it's like a camouflage screen. Yeah, it's on, so it's, got, it's a thin, thin screen. Uh, and, and you just pop that over the top of yourself. And, and it just it just takes takes the edge away. And then it's got a little, it, these are designed specially, and it's got a little hole with elastic in it. So you poke the lens through, pop it over yourself, and just lay there. And the birds, yeah, just, yeah, a lot of the time they just come right up to you. I need that. Yeah, uh, so the, I've never seen one of them. One of them before. That's absolutely perfect for what I uh, what I need. It's you know sometimes on the Bond films and that I'll be shooting the cars and I'll have to be hidden shot. miles down yeah. the yeah miles down the track and uh, and a lot of the time the guys will paint me out or I you know I just build my own little hide. Mm. But uh, that would be perfect. Although yeah, the last they're, they're 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 nothing, you can stick them in your bag, uh, and you just just literally attach it to lens. Pop it over the top, and you and you vanish. There's a, I think it's called um, outdoor photography. I think in the UK that that do them. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, and get those. So there's various cheap ones around, but they don't last. But these, they're fantastic. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely um, hook into one of them. Mm. That uh, that would be very helpful. This back, is just... backlit vaping. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's incredible! Yeah, it's just early in the morning, just um, just after sunrise, nice and cold, cold winter morning. Did you see the vape? The 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 oh the vape yeah coming out yeah. when you yeah. saw it. Yep. Yeah. And were you just like, I mean, that, is this a is this a common what, occurrence or was this something that? Yeah, you know, it's a common occurrence. Yeah. You've just got to get the angle right to shoot it. Um, yeah. You have to shoot into the light to get it to pop like that. So I mean, that that was. And what I was at the, there to shoot, basically. Yeah, I often go with a, a shot in mind, you know, so it's a specific place at a specific time to get what I want. So, oh, beautiful, beautiful image. Oh, oh there's a kingfisher. Yeah. So there you go. Five. <laughs> no, there's four. <laughs> Actually, probably three. Because I did yeah. swan twice. Yeah. <laughs> so they uh, they grab these little uh, mud crabs. And then they'll sit back and they'll take them back to a post. They'll swoop in the mud, pick it out, land on a post, and then just they quite often bash them around to get the arms and legs off. And then they'll flip it up and suck it straight down. Beautiful birds. Oh, the the, yeah, the yeah. colours on them, I really yeah. love them. Are they related to the kookaburra at all? Do you know? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, the kookaburra is a kingfisher, I think. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. I think it's the biggest one. Do you have kookaburras in New Zealand? There are a few, yeah, yeah. 
I think a guy, it's, um, one of the sort of, you know, early you know, landed gentry um, uh, brought some over and bred them. So there they are living in, in the wild and stuff. There aren't many. I've seen, I, I've never seen one. And then one day I saw one and then another one arrived and sat next to it. And then another one arrived. So I saw, I saw three and I've not seen one since. <laughs> <laughs> three in, the, three yeah, in the one three. row. And you've I've never seen another one. So Oh, no, that's a regal looking bird. Yeah, the white-faced heron. Um, yeah, I just catch them when the wind's uh, behind them. Um, and, yeah, it flips the feathers up. It's such a cool bird. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. I mean, they're just, the, just the lines that birds give you. Yeah, yeah. so really... elegant. Great shapes. Are your kids in, into photography? No, thankfully. Oh, they've done a bits and pieces and stuff. In fact, we went to um, one of the uh, island reserves here and um, Jake won the uh, junior photographer of the year for it. Uh, so sort of got his picture in the calendar and stuff. Um, but no, they, they're hopefully going in a different direction. So yeah, one, right. one photographer in the house is enough. <laughs> yeah, I know that uh, that feeling. I can't get mine to be my family be interested in it at all. Work on all these really cool movies, like mm, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, all the friends think that it's really cool and follow me on yeah, Instagram exactly. and stuff. But yeah, yeah, you know, it's um, God, I'm so, this is so cool looking at all these photos with you. I've been it's really it. looking forward to doing this. Like, so oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, it's, it, it, I, it's as you said earlier. It, you, I just try and bond with the bird. You know, just just sit there for a while without actually taking any pictures. And then just let it do its thing, and it's relaxed by then, and and just yeah, and I'll have yeah, I'll envisage the a lot of the images I, I want to get out of any situation, um, and they look so cool straight on. A lot of birds do, oh, yeah. but it has to be bolt on, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you know, I mean, like a little bit of movement, and that you know they do clock you, and um, you know you want that shot of them staring straight down the barrel, don't you? Yeah, you do. And quite a, and another little trick with the mirrorless cameras is to inst um, if you're shooting electronic, you can shoot totally silent. But if you put it on just one up setting, it makes a tiny little tick noise, and that can quite often, if you don't use it, and then just suddenly use it, they'll just look stare straight at you. Oh, yeah, right. A little That's a tiny tick. Yeah. And um, oh, that, you have you had to have won an award with that. No, I haven't. I haven't really put that in anywhere. Actually, that one. It's um, I, I guess that's your pie shag again. But, but you know, the feathers just look like scales, don't they? Oh, and they, those I could look at that forever. Yeah, that would look great on a wall, actually. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, cool birds. Oh my gosh, my friend's an artist. She would love to paint that. I've had, yeah, it's funny, funny you should say that. I've had loads of people come on and say, would you mind if I painted your image? And, and, I've, and I've quite often said, yes, you know, as long as you, if, if you sell them, um, you know, make a donation yeah. to the, you know, the bird rescue places I help out at every now and then uh, as, a, as a little gesture. But, you know, because you can't at the end of the day, you can't say no, because they can then just basically copy it anyway. So, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. I don't own any of my photos anyway, so it doesn't really matter. No, no, exactly. It removes that, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 I was, if I did, I'd be retired by now. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't you just? Uh, uh, this one, yeah. Well, this one's just won me the um, Sony Alpha Awards in Australia, uh, and I would have gone over there uh, for it, but had it not been for certain timings. But... Um, yeah, that's that. That's it's a picture I I've seen, and it's it's taken me you know, a couple of years to take it because the birds when they wash they always sort of they put the head in the water and they'll mm. lift this film of water up to use to wash, and you can see the bird's face through that film. But <sighs> to get it, you've got to shoot straight onto it, and they move the whole time. So you can line yourself up and you think oh, I'm going to get it, and then it will turn slightly at an angle and do the thing, and you won't get it. But, but that eventually got it. That was on the I shot that on a Sony A9 and a 600 F4 handheld, leaning over the edge of the lake, over the water. So I'm sort of right over the edge there and shooting through. Are you um, 
exclusively Fuji now, or do you? Still yeah, have well, pretty much. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm exclusively Fuji, uh, other than um, friends who lend me their gear when they turn up. I've got a friend who's a um, he's a he was a cannon shooter. Um, he's been given a whole lot of Sony kit to shoot the Olympics. So he's kindly given me the 600 f4 while he's shooting Sony, and then whenever he comes up, um, I grab the Sony off him and uh, go and shoot some stuff. So because at a Sony awards, you've got to um, everything has to be shot on the Sony. So yeah, yeah. Wow, it's just an incredible shot. I'm, it's got to be inspiring people to get out there. Hi, uh, hopefully, yeah. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Yeah, you can't go wrong with baby birds, can you, really? No, baby anything. Baby yeah. birds. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And they do they, such a strange look to them, aren't they? They're just like... Yeah, some really, of those prehistoric looking things, really. I think, like, there's a few cute um, baby birds, like, or chicks, like the uh, the swans. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, I think they're lovely. Yeah, but some of the some of these things they just look, you know, like that coot from a while from a while back. They're just, uh, but they're not ugly, but they're just different. Yeah, <laughs> different. It's a yeah. good, good way to yeah. put it. It just looks so cool. Oh, you can just see the wiseness of the of the adult and the yeah. Yeah. the vulnerability of the of the baby there. Yeah. Oh come on! That's your baby coot again. That's probably maybe three days old. You can still see the little white bit on the end, end of its beak. That's called an egg tooth, and that's the little bit that they use to chip the way out of the egg. And that oh, falls really? off after a few days. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, that was. I just laid down in front of it. And it just came waddling towards me. Its head looks like a lychee. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably not much bigger than a ping pong ball. To give yeah, you so it's about the same size. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> edible. Yeah. Oh, he's just gorgeous. Yeah, great, isn't it? Yeah. And great really colour. Look that orangey coloured head um, after about a week or so. Oh, wow. And yeah. what about the parents? Are they alarmed that you're so so close i mean you probably on uh, a long end, but... this is this is uh in a park in auckland so they're pretty relaxed you're not like right. uh, uh, you haven't flown in by helicopter and got dropped into some wilderness place so <laughs> <laughs> with bare grills eight more than past half the time <laughs> that's hilarious oh that is really cool yeah that took a while to get actually that did it looks a fairly simple picture but it, they uh, they wolf those things down so fast. Yeah. They really, I've never seen a bird eat, eat, eat the daisies. Yeah. Or yeah, they'll pick it up oh. and just sort of gone. And to get the to get it dead straight on for looking at me was uh, yeah took a while, but yeah, and just that feather on the uh, on its left hand side just poking out too. It's really yeah. really adds to it. Oh. It's another dab chick one. And that's again, that's 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 shot on the Fuji 200 F2 wide open. It just it just blows everything out completely. You know, that fabulous look you can get. You do you, you got a, a Nikon 202? I do actually. Yeah, it's, they're just great lenses, aren't they? Do I have it here? No, I don't. It's, it must be in the office. Um, yeah, they are, they're incredible lenses. Yeah. And uh, I think the Nikon one's just been discontinued. No, has it? Yeah, I was thinking of getting rid of it, but um, hang on to it. I think I'll hang on to it. Yeah, um, it's you know, I've been it's it's hard with the whole mirrorless side of things of, you know, what it's like changing over to different equipment and systems and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah. you know, I'm still shooting DSLRs and the the new D6, and um, there's always going to be a place for me with those lenses and cameras. Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure, yeah. Oh, this is great. Again, that's that that's almost bond like, isn't it? You know the start of the bond films? Yep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Again, that's uh, that was uh, the two hundred F two again, shot wide open. It just it has a unique bokeh to it. Uh and that's so that's that though all those rings are highlights off the water behind it. Um, you know, they're oh, changing all the time. Yeah. That is big boker, isn't it? Yeah. 
uh, and you can't stop it down. So, I mean, I've done pictures like that where I'm a, on the elect, put it on the electronic shutter, and I'm at you know twenty thousandth of a second at f two <laughs> on the lowest ISO I can go. But really, just to retain that look, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Oh, so ah, uh, that's my raft. Yeah, I've. But are you you with it though? You don't just leave it there. No, I'm with it. It just it just gives you the the ability to get that at water level. Sometimes, sometimes you're in you in a in a place where you can't lay in the water or lay next to it. So that I can just lower that down and just twist it around. I trigger the camera with a with a cable release and and just watch it on the monitor. So I can twist it around. That's just as when it's moving. That's probably the lens is probably two inches off the water. Wow, that's a really that, that's um that's Curtis, a nice little tip. Funny. <laughs> what do you yeah. use there? Is it like um uh pull um pool noodles? Pool noodles. Yeah, so that's what they are. Yeah, and a and a sliding rig. You know, it's like a video rig, but it works really well. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that rig a lot. Yeah, but it does really, really work, and it's and it's pretty stable as well. And with the monitor too, that's um, mm -hmm. that's really. Yeah, you need a monitor. I, was, I actually had it set up with just the back screen flipped up, but it was just awkward to you know try and watch the focus point. Um, but with a monitor, it makes such a difference. And would you use autofocus for this, or doesn't really matter yeah, auto yeah. manual? Autofocus off the trigger, so you've got a game with the monitor. You can see the focus point, and you just keep it on the bird, and just twist it around, and as follow the bird by twisting it and shooting. Have we seen any shots um, that you use this rig with? No, um, no, I'm not sure whether there's any on there, but I'll, I'll, I'll flag one up if it comes up. But... Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's um. So equipment-wise, for you know, not everyone is a professional photographers. There'll be a lot of enthusiasts that are interested in having a look at this. Um, <clears throat> is there any cheap way out, or is it you know it's long lenses and expensive hobby? This one? No, I think it's, it's it's getting cheaper as as time goes on. I think uh, if you know for a, you can set yourself up with a basic kit, either Canon, Nikon, or Fuji or Sony, um, with something like a one hundred to four hundred uh, lens and a and a maybe a crop sensor body, which gives you that extra length um, and you're good to go really. Um, and as you know, it's not, it's not too expensive nowadays to, to kit that up. Yeah. Uh, and you, got, you know, fantastic gear, really the, you know, pin sharp. And it's just, <clears throat> instead of having a, a 600 or an 800 mil, you've got a smaller lens. So, you, and it's, and it's, you've just got to use a little bit of skill in getting yourself nearer to the subject. But once you're there, then it's a lot more flexible. Trying to move a 600 f4 around quickly um, is just a nightmare. Yeah, Whereas right. you know, smaller lens, handheld, you can you can react to things happening, and that's where the better pictures come from. So the DX um, sensor bodies are, are probably quite key to to, to well, the APS-C ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, very good. Yeah. Oh. Come on, I'm glad I didn't ask a question before that came up. <laughs> Did you win yeah, something with this? Yeah, yeah. Again, it's going out there in the rain. Um, and it, there's nobody there. Everybody's gone because uh, it's raining. And you just sit there and, you know, the birds are covered in raindrops and every now and then they'll have had enough so they're going to shake. And you can always tell when they're going to do it. They just sort of put their heads up and they'll just – and you think, oh, here we go. And, yeah, you get the head shake. That's just astounding. It's such a, such a good shot. They're great subjects. It's, it's great access out, out at this place called Murawai, just north of Auckland, about 40 minutes from where I live. All right, okay. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. Oh, come on. No, you had to have won an award with one of these two shots. Yeah, I haven't actually put that in for anything. That was that was taken after sunset. It was I kept watching it, and when and when the sun was up, it was it, it was dozing off. That's probably almost asleep. But during the when the sun was up to its left, to the right of the picture, as you look at it, it was just uneven light. There was just too much light coming in on one side. But then once the sun dropped, and when I dropped down, I shot that about a fifteenth of a second, I think. 
uh, wide open. And yeah, just just the light was then balanced and soft enough. Yeah, cool. <laughs> they got great eyes. Oh, nature was just really thoughtful when they yeah. made birds. That yeah, once you get that symmetry as well to to work, is that the same? It is the same bird, not the same. Yeah, same bird, um, but not the same one. Yeah, yeah. You just go for those lines. It's just astounding. I could look at these forever. Oh. Rain again. Yeah, yeah. Rain. This is you and your rain, eh? Yeah, the rain droplets. Love them. <laughs> They, they tend to lock down when it's raining like that, so they'll just hunker down, sleep, wait for the rain to go, give a quick shake, and then back to normal. There's a lot of the birds that I'm noticing in here with with um, blue markings on the eyes. Is this something for hunting for them, or uh, I think well, these they're they're um, mostly t marine type birds. So whether that makes a difference there or not, I don't know. But um, the, certainly the pied shags. Um, their eyes look a lot brighter in the breeding period, so it's, that's part of part of why they're that color. Okay, um, breeding season colors a lot of it but... for attracting the mate. Yeah, blue eye shadow. Blue eye shadow. Oh, what is that little bird? He's that cute. Is a black fronted dotterel. It's not much, about the same size as a sparrow, really. Tiny little really? thing. Yeah. And I was laying down in the in the water on a riverbank, photographing some terns who were feeding in front of me, and this thing flew past and landed behind me. So I swivelled round, and it was it was further off up behind it. It was about three foot away in a sort of a bad spot. And these pebbles with the right light, and I thought that that would be a, a great picture if it only ran down to that little spot and stopped in those pebbles that would be fantastic and then like three seconds later it ran down stopped sat there for like five seconds went another two feet in another spot which is just as nice did exactly the same thing and then flew off <laughs> no <laughs> way it never happens he just yeah, did that for you oh my yeah God. just the right angle yeah come on yeah, incoming. That's uh, yeah, it's a white-fronted tern with a tern colony just um, on the South Island. Is that a sardine or something? Or a, a, yeah, um, one of something like that. You know, pilchard or a sardine pilchard. or something. Yeah, yeah, coming in to feed its chicks. Good bag. Okay, it's kind of working out where they're going to come in, working the flight paths. They tend to fly into the wind if they can. So line that up, line up the background. And and I I was just sitting watching three nests, knowing that the birds would come into a certain angle. The the background in that spot is dark, and just wait for them to those specific parents to to come in. So why is this bird tagged? Uh it's um, dock and sort of research things. So they just they'll put them. What they'll do, they'll go to the colonies, and when the little um, birds are in a, a baby stage, they'll they'll ring them up. And put the details on, and then you can, they can then hopefully monitor them where they wherever they go. And people oh, wow. send it, photos and all, or you know, if the birds died, and they'll find a little the ring and send it in, and they can then work out how old it is and oh wow, all those details. That's quite fascinating. Oh, that. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, it was a heron down in uh, Kaikoura. That was one of those things. I was driving past and I saw it, and I and I, I didn't have time to get chains or anything. I just grabbed the gear, waded out into the water, and hid behind a rock. And uh, yeah, got a few, got a few nice frames of that, and then came back to the car and got changed again. So sometimes you don't have, you know, you just got to do it and grab the gear and go. He's a good fisherman, that one. Yeah, he was doing really well actually. <laughs> Far better than me. <laughs> yeah, I've been fishing with you. I know. <laughs> I should have seen hey, all my fishing pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you um, you like your wetlands? Is is that because it's oh, a, yeah. a good tramping ground, or um, is it's, it that you actually you know you're more attracted to these to these birds? Um, I think it, it makes more action pictures. You get water in a in an image. Um, there's a lot more going on. You, you, know, you get water splashes and the, the birds are actively hunting with these things so whenever you've got water and you've got birds hunting it just it just it all sorts all sort of works really yeah so it's um 
That's and you've got most you got choice in in New Zealand. You're never far from water, so. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I've done. I, I did that walk across the island from, um, from uh, the 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 sea over to the harbour. Oh yeah, cool. It's only yeah. like three hours to walk from one end of the country yeah, to the no, other. No. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That has to be manual oh. focus, surely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I sort of auto focus, get it in the right zone, and then just tweaking it from there. I was incredibly close. That bird. <laughs> basically landed on top of me i was at the gannet colony um along the side of a sort of walkway uh, and as i said earlier they they're horrendous landers so this uh, i was photographing another gannet and this thing landed literally on top of me landed feet next to me wing over my back and sat there like one feet from me with its beak about about that far away mm. and a pretty savage beak so i just turned my head for a couple of minutes and it had settled down and did all its feathers and stuff and then it just just carried on as normal as if nothing's happening. So I'm like by this stage two feet away, and and I've got I've got my two hundred f two in my hand. I think I'm way too close. Then I, I remembered I got a, a a macro coupler sort of extender thing in my pocket. So I pulled that out, whipped the lens off, stuck that on, and just rolled about another foot back. So it's probably taken from less than three feet away. Oh, and even pretty. with you, even with you putting the um the converter yeah. on it didn't yeah. spook no no it's fine it just it just carried on as if nothing was happening so I've, you know i'm literally i could have touched it <laughs> and you can just you, you seldom get pictures when you're so close that you can see the shape of the actual eyeball and you know the water the, the feathers reflecting onto the actual eyeball but do you find it peaceful like like fishing as well or yeah no absolutely you're in the zone like you are with fishing really yeah and I mean, you are a professional photographer, but is, mm. but is, uh, you, do you make much money out of the bird photography or is it more of a hobby? No, no, no. I mean, I've, I've just got various pictures in a, uh, an agency and you get paid every now and then for bits and pieces, but no, it's more of a sort of a pastime thing really, um, between jobs. And a lot of these places I've, you know, I've got the gear in the car the whole time. So, and they're fairly easy access. So I'll do a job at, you know, say I've got a job at nine o'clock in the morning, I'll whiz out early at six, spend a couple of hours taking pictures and then go and do the job. Just an absolutely beautiful image. Great story too. Right, just going about his business right in front of you. It's absolutely Yeah, great. yeah, very relaxed. I wasn't, but he was. <laughs> oh, here's one of your hides here. Is that, that's yeah, with that's your- um, That's with the with blind. Your, with your throw over. What's it called, a blind? Blind, yeah, or uh, a bag hide or a bag blind, yeah. Right. Wow. That's one of the little sort of, uh, hides I've got sort of set up sort of semi-permanent in a couple of spots to call old branches and then I'll just crawl in there. So you, right you, you have a couple of spots which you leave? Yeah, yeah. I'll go and resurrect them every now and then, but that's a, a the tide comes right in up, uh, sort of basically underneath where you are there. The water comes right in up to it. Um, wow. And it's got really a lot of heron pictures there. That's great. So that's, that's good. Good. Get in at high tide, and then wait for the tide to to start going down. Then the herons fly in and start feeding on the exposed mudflats. So you're only you know ten feet away from the bird. Wow. And how long will you will you sit there before you oh, get any action? I'll probably sit in there about an hour before high tide, and then they'll turn up just after high tide. So I'll probably be in there for like two and a half hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You take a little so, picnic or anything. Yeah, Snack. little snacks. Got your phone. Take a book. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. Oh, look at that. That's a little spider on it. Yeah, and that was absolutely hairing around that gannet's head so fast. And I saw yeah. it two or three times. And uh, yeah, I eventually got it. I got like, three frames of it. It was moving so fast, and it obviously lived on its head because it disappeared around the back there, and it just sort of went underneath its feathers. And just you know, that's that's where it lives. They quite often so, have little hooks and stuff on their heads, but I've never seen a spider on it. Before. So you think that spider probably actually lives on yeah. the bird? That may well, because a lot of these gannets come in from Australia as well. So that may actually be an Australian spider that's actually come in like that. Wow, that's a yeah. biohazard right there. Yeah. Wow. It's quite cool. 
small bird. Red, oh, no, that was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, very small spider. But what did they fly that far? Yeah, they breed and what, here, yeah. and then the chicks they make their first flight. They don't land. They fly all the way to Australia um, and to Phillip Island. A lot of them. Uh, and they'll spend, you know, a few years there until they're mature, and then they'll come back. And and they don't rest on the on the um, ocean. No, and um, they yeah they do sleep on the ocean. But um, the ones that uh, when they when the chicks fly when they take off on the cliff here for the first time, that's their mm. first flight. They won't then stop flying until they get to Australia. And they I think oh, they. Wow. They start off at three kilos, and by the time they get to Australia, they're, they're down to a kilo. No way. Yeah. That's and amazing. Feed yeah. Well, that's what the bloke at the Gannett colony told me anyway. There's that bloker again on that lens. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's a good look. It really is. Yeah. It just, you know, just that's just hitting the water behind it, just a little bit. Of, and it just constantly changes the whole time, and it's, you know. I love it. Oh, oh, here's another one. This is your signature. You love these, oh, don't yeah. you? It took me. It took me ages to get this picture. I and I shot it with the 100-400 uh, with uh, the macro coupler on. So that bird's only probably four feet away on a what is a it's like a 600 mil with a macro coupler from four feet. So that's full frame. Um, laying on the uh, on the sort of viewing platform is shooting between the rails. So I've got the camera wedged between the rails and this bird's just looking at me and it's just, it's moving the whole time. And you just got to catch it when it's, you know, straight at you. Yeah. Oh, and, I get you. So they're all skitsy and then. Yeah. Well, it's, so it stops and then it moves and it stops and it's back forwards. And yeah, but it almost looks like it's cross-eyed looking at the feather on the end of its beak. Yeah. I can never look at birds the same anymore after all this. Oh, there you are. It's me on the beach. Yeah. Hey, mate, just pan right to a little bit. That your camera's not pointing at the right thing. Yeah, I, I missed that one. Yeah, this is why you're it's here. It's right in front of you. I know. This is why you're here. I take, take tips. <laughs> <laughs> I like all your gear. Yeah, it's a camp. I'm I'm dressed in two sets of gear most of the time, either camo gear or or orange fluoro gear for the construction side stuff. Oh. It's one or the other most of the time. That's funny. I I do like it a lot. It's the sort of stuff that I'd wear to work. Yeah, oh, it can be useful. Oh um, uh, yeah, I, I love this. It's, that's taken me two years to get that picture. Well, now that I'm glad that you explained that before about how fast the moon moves, because um, yeah, that shot, that's so that shot with a Fuji XT3 body on a Canon 600 mil, uh, so 900 mil lens uh, <laughs> at f13, I think, to get a bit of depth of field, <laughs> one two one two fifth of a second uh, on a tripod on the beach. So I'm lining up the moon as it's coming up and I'm trying to line up a gannet. There are only one or two gannets on the edge of the cliff. So I've got to line up the gannet with the moon. So I'm running around on the beach with a tripod, lining it up, doing a few shots, and then the moon's moved again. So you've got to move back again to line it up. Yeah, it takes a mission, but, and then you've got to get the gannets doing something while you've got it actually lined up with the moon. So yeah, it's, it's a hard shot to get. It's very romantic to the two pretty yeah, under, yeah. under the, yeah. the uh, full moon. It's glorious. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's probably taken from oh, 300, 200 metres maybe, the actual gannets away from me. Amazing. Amazing. That's in the garden. That's a lot easier, that one. <laughs> <laughs> What's that yeah. feather? Is that a tuft? Is that a... Yeah, so I've got a little tuft on it. It's funny little things. It's a Californian quail. Oh, right. Cool little birds, yeah. I've got about 30 or 40 of them living in the bush around the house. Really? Yeah, yeah, great little things. They're just beautiful birds. I, I really yeah. understand now why people are so into photographing them and that. It's, um, yeah, it's you're even... Australia has an immense amount of just incredibly coloured birds as well. 
I wanted to teach myself how to paint landscapes, but I can't paint. So maybe I can, maybe I'll find something else like this. Yeah, speak to what you know. I think it's a trick, isn't it, with these things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually. Play with the cameras would be my tip. <laughs> This could be in the Serengeti or somewhere. It's just beautiful. Uh, it could be, could it? Yeah, yeah, with a sort of a sort of a sleeping leopard just below it or something. Yeah, that pink hue. Oh. Yeah, very early in the morning, probably uh, twenty minutes before sunrise. Is it sky in the background or water? Yeah, yeah, pink sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that pre-dawn look. Fantastic. Oh, there you are, back again. New another new jacket. Yeah, tooled up. I have to have loads of jackets because you end up lying in bird poo a lot of the time. So, you know, you have to sort of rotate them quite a lot. That's interesting. And, and obviously another little tip along those lines would be um, that, you know, that it's a three-quarter length jacket as well. So you want to have quite lengthy yeah. jackets, right? Yeah, yeah, that's useful because you, you, you end up with sort of carrying a bit of gear in the pockets and stuff. But, yeah, the longer the jacket, the better you can sit, sit, lay down and, yeah, you do so get that's your go-to to kit. Your um, your six hundred and your uh, two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I don't you often have an organic cotton. So I'll, I'll 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 normally I'll only have one on any given thing because I'll I'll be fairly specific on what I'm shooting on what you know what the subject is. So I don't I won't tend to lug two things around because that's a fair bit of gear to yeah. model through the mud with. So do you use what's the shortest lens that you use? The two hundred. No, uh, uh, I've used it right up to eight mil, you know, yeah. the white stuff. Yeah, and in fact, I've just bought, um, just bought a, another little um, toy. This is a little Sony um, RX Zero, um, a bit like a GoPro, but better quality. It's a little action camera. Oh, <clears> yeah, <throat> I've heard that the quality on them is quite astounding. Yeah, it's superb. It's got a, you know, sort of a Leica lens on it. and, and you can, So I'm going to paint do some remote stuff with this, build a little rock around it and put it in real close. So it's got close focus and I can, you know, use pocket wizards on it and that should, um, should get can some. Can you set that off with the pocket wizard? Yeah. Yeah. I can teach you how to use pocket wizards. That's the one uh, thing I'm good at. Yeah. I bet you are. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you've got hundreds of them, haven't you? <laughs> I, I have, I have, um, eight. Yeah. 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 So <clears> no, <throat> yeah. Pocket wizards on this. I've only just bought it. So I'm just going to have a, Good old play with this. Build a couple of little mini hides for it and put it in spots and see what I can get. Oh yeah, you can, then you can get like a remote control boat, and put it on that. Yeah, I've tried that one on that um, thing I've got. Yeah, it says put a little motor on it and chug it out. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Do you um do you use remote rigs at all and set them up? I mean, is that something? Uh, that I do work. Yeah, I do for work. Uh, do no, that's what, not for birds. Um, occasionally for birds, but birds are a little bit unpredictable. And there's, you, you can predict where they're going to land, but you can't get that pinpoint eye focus that you need. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know that's absolutely critical. So they can be out. They can land on a perch you want, but you to get that eye in focus is you can be you know ten mil out and it, you throw it away. And maybe that'll work now where you've got the new um new eye tracking, yeah. animal tracking. Mm. This is another another early morning shot. Yeah, another early morning mist. Yeah. Yeah. Is there is early morning or late afternoon, is there a better time? Or or is it I mean, is early morning and so afternoon or are they they the same when it comes to getting good um uh, getting good action on them? Yeah, it's it's the birds tend to be active first thing in the morning because they've been asleep and they're hungry, uh, so they get up and they they, they want to feed. So that's when you get a lot of action stuff. And the light, as you know, tends to be you know better in the mornings and a bit more dramatic. Um, yeah, yeah, it works a lot oh. better. Light -wise. And a lot of this stuff is all about the light as well, isn't it? You can take a bird picture at you know midday and a bird picture the same bird in the same spot at you know eight o'clock in the morning. It's a totally different image. Yeah, totally. And I agree with you too. But with morning light, it's um, you know, light that you actually have to work for and get up, get up for. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it always pays off as opposed to you know standing around waiting for a sunset. Anyone can do that. It takes mm. takes a lot more to get up early. Oh, there you go. Although that's a sunset, right? Yeah, uh, sunrise actually. That one is yeah. it. Yeah. 
early morning in Auckland. Yeah. Who does? Who's doing all these photos for you? Uh, I go out with various um, friends who are similarly afflicted as I am. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So there's. So you'll go. Yeah. A couple of you will go. It's not. Yeah. Always, yeah. Uh, I do a lot of stuff on my own, but I, I will go with you know other people as well. So we're always now chasing a few pictures. I'm going to have to check out where the good spots are in Sydney to go. Yeah, it's a like friend of mine called. Um, Sorry, there's a friend of mine who does a lot of wildlife photography in Sydney, um, Gokai, and um, he's got a couple of real good spots. Oh, I could, I could hook you up with him. He'd yeah. Take I think those are one of the one of the major parks in the centre of the city there, and get some amazing stuff. Oh yeah, the botanical gardens. Yeah, that's where he goes. Yep, that's it. Oh wow! Oh, mm. I'm going to do that. That'd be fun. I'll get oh. some tips for you. It's making me miss my family seeing all these. Yeah, the little baby ones. Family yeah. ones. Yeah, it's cute little birds. They really are. That's a great shot. Oh, Just the oh, face. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Oh, this is a bird, a little zebra bird in the in the yeah, feathers. Yeah, it lives on the back. Yeah, dab chicks they're called. Yeah. Okay, so then that clearly looks like a male and a female, right? But the, as in the different colours. Yeah, the, uh, the the female in that is uh, a, a slightly better colour bird. I think she's the one with the baby on the back. The male is with the slimmer one on the right there. But yeah, right. It's normally the other way around. Normally, it's the male that is more. The brighter of the of the two, is that to attract a mate? Uh, oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I better look. Oh, at the oh, come <clears> on! <throat> see, see the little one hanging on the back there. Yeah, I know, every, right? Yeah, they, they and it fell off in the end because every time they the mum, you know, does a sort of a, 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 a preen and a shake every twenty minutes or so. She'll do this thing when she's done, finish the brain, and then she'll have a shake to get all the feathers back, and then the babies will bowl off the back. <laughs> you can almost see this sort of expression on the little one's face. Yeah, it's like, oh, not again. <laughs> yeah, kind of hang on. Yeah. Uh, do they have more than one um, one chick that's... Yeah, it's, uh, two or three. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Great, I know. Oh, Oh, that was beautiful light that day. God, it was lovely. I'm laying in the water there, getting absolutely soaked as the tide's coming up, and I just thought this the heron was feeding its way towards me. I was thought I was going to lay here. I'll uh, get changed in the car, uh, and it just yeah crept, kept up towards me. And it's just feeding, picking up crabs in the in the water, and just eating them. It just but the light was just so soft and beautiful for for about twenty minutes. It's amazing. I was going to say that it was a heron, so I'm going to claim that as well. Oh, yeah, you're on it. You're on it. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> I believe you. Oh, oh, yeah, you better believe me. Come on. This is another yeah. award winner, or you haven't put it in anything yet? I, um, I've only just taken that, actually. That was okay. shot on the um, uh, while I was testing the Canon uh, EOS R5 uh, a couple of weeks ago. On the 600 mil. So I was mostly doing um, birds in flight with the doing the eye tracking, which it was absolutely superb. But there was this gannet that was preening right down below me. And I thought, I just can't resist doing a few, a few frames of that. And it just it just worked out so well with the, you know, the, the way the fe feathers map into the beak there and the symmetry and the, the detail on the white feathers and just beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah, like a superhero and it's about to burst out. Yeah. Yeah, well, they sleep. What they do is they, when they rest, they'll, they'll they'll turn their little heads around and then put it put it in between the wings on its back. So that's what it was doing there, just just nestling in to to have a bit of a snooze. Were you testing the camera for Canon or um? Just no, just, uh, I got it off one of the shops, and they said, you know, give it a go, see what you think. Let us know. And what do you think? You're going to stick to the Fuji, or you might switch? Oh yeah, on? the Fuji because it's so good for work as well. It's just the images out of it are just just the colours are just beautiful, and it's quite as small. So a lot of my um, work is on big construction site stuff. So I'm going up and down ladders in you know fairly inex inaccessible places in tunnels and oh wow. That. So having smaller gear makes it so much easier. You know, clambering your way up with cameras smashing all over the place. Sounds uh, like a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, it is great fun, and the Fuji works so well for that. Yeah. Oh, 
Another one. Come on, stop it. Early morning again. That's a you know just that's pre sunrise. That's just as a sort of the you know that early red light. Um, yeah, probably half an hour before the sun's up. Is that an ocean bird or a swamp bird? Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's, you don't know what this one is, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you know, what it is. Actually, I'm you can edit it then, can't you? Go. Is that an oyster catcher? <laughs> is that an oyster catcher? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a South Island pied oyster catcher. So, are those beaks like really strong? Do they actually bust catch oysters? The yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll smash oysters off the rocks and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's incredible. Oh. That's, yeah, that was that was a bit of fun actually. That one. That was uh, I got lined that up with a traffic light. It was uh, down at the uh, wastewater treatment plant for near Watercare's base here, uh, and they've got sort of traffic control up there. They, so they've got a you know a set of traffic lights. So you've got green, orange, and red. Uh, and I managed to sort of go up and down to sort of line it up with all three, but the, but the red light there was the better one out of the three. So <laughs> that is like, what, sick. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking, like, what, how did you get the sun to look like that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love the tricks of photography. Yeah. Jeez, everything. Right? yeah. Everything that's around you. Oh. That's beautiful. beautiful. Oh. Yeah, that, that's all the light sparkling off the sand. That's on the Sony, actually, that one, the Sony 600 F4, with a 1.4 on it as well, I think. The quality um, is astounding. Oh, it's just, it's, all this gear is blinding nowadays, it really is, as you well know. All this, you know, the the, the last sort of, what, three, four years, the, the technology for the sensors is just incredible. And, it, you, know, the, it's the, you know, matched with the new glass and the new coatings and stuff is, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I tell people. You know, it's any camera from the last three to five years can mm. almost be the last camera you'll ever need and then just build up on your on your glass. Yeah, build up on your glass. And you look back, you're probably the same. You look back on, you know, you go through your portfolio and stuff taken 25 years ago, which at the time was, a, you know, a blinding image. You look back at it and go, what the hell is that grainy old bloody thing? <laughs> In my chat with Tim Page, um, you know, he brought it up that, um, you know, you'd use different films for for different yeah, effects, yeah. and it was you know, it's the kids now just don't get it. I, no, I wish everyone could have a crack at at shooting film again. Shooting oh, film. Yeah, that that's, is, that's another great thing about the, with the Fuji. You probably got it on the on the Nikon thing. You can just you, you can just dial in film simulations like Velvia and Provia yeah. and all that. So you just dial it in on the back of the camera, so you can just shoot. You know whatever film you'd like. I guess the Fuji has that to replicate its own film. It does, yeah. Yeah, it's very good. But you can do it in post as well. You shoot in RAW. There's a, there's a Photoshop, you know, app to, yeah. to rerun it through. So, And what's this one, Jake? Um, it's a red-legged hen. That's amazing. No, it's oh. a <laughs> pied, pied stilt. Uh, and this was this was uh, again on the Sony 604 with a with a two times, um, blindingly sharp even with converters that gear. But it really yeah, great. Is. yeah, it's quite something else. Mm. Yeah, right in close again. Yeah. Sony 600 f4 two times. Not much step to feel, but you know you it's. Just you just nail it. Put the focus point over to one side on the small as you can get, and just lock it on that eye, and just just keep tweaking it until it's you know because it's moving the whole time. That bird it never sits still. Makes me speechless. That shot. It's just creepy, isn't it? It's almost like, it's like yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, it's like the what is it the the old bird from um, New Zealand, the extinct one, the big one, like an emu. Moa. Moa, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, here's that shot again. Have a wash. That's your oyster catcher. Oh, that's the oyster catcher. Yeah. Oh. The ones with silhouetted a few frames yeah. back. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I didn't realize that the beak was so orange. Mm. 
gain high shutter speed, I think about four thousandth of a second or something, just to freeze the water. That's great. I never thought about um, having to use such high shutter speeds with with birds. Mm. Oh, look at that! Come on, what is that? Yeah, is, that is that pull the air or is it pollen? Yeah, that's that's um, that's the breath coming out of its mouth in the cold air in the mornings. So. Um, on the first few frames I've got of that, it's got it had its tongue out, and then and as, as its breath's coming out, it, it leaves the shape in the droplets in the sh uh, actually in the air, the shape of its tongue. It's bizarre, oh, yeah. yeah. And you can actually, when you zoom in on that, you can actually see each individual droplet. It's just, yeah. Go in backlit first thing in the morning, line yourself up against the sun, and that bird was probably that's almost full frames. So that bird was probably maybe four feet away. That could be the most beautiful eye on a bird I've ever seen. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's almost unique. I don't know another bird with a with a white um, iris or pupil like that. It's, yeah. Beautiful. Oh. I knew you'd be young. Yeah, maybe we did it on Instagram, yeah. Because these, and you know, these are really difficult images to capture. It's not like you know you pick up a camera and go boom. It's no. I mean, this is this is uh, hanging over the water's edge, uh, leaning right out with the water. You know, I've got one arm in the water uh, with a, a two hundred uh, f two with a one point four on it. So it's a, it's a heavy bit of gear, but you, so you've got half an arm in the water, leaning out and bending round to shoot the bird, and and just trying to predict what it's doing. Amazing. Uh, wood duck. Nearly. Scalp. A scalp? Come on. Maybe it's yeah. called a wood duck in Australia. Oh, yeah, it probably is, actually. I think that's what they call it in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just again having a wash and a preen and high shutter speed. And and it's you get, get, when you get the water flat calm like that, the, when the water's high, highlighted with the sun, you just get that. Uh, lines of reflection like that and it looks quite cool but the water has to be pretty calm for that i love the shadow of that droplet on its um feathers yeah real harsh light but still you know still works but yeah well that's goes yeah that goes to show what you're saying you know this really really works that you know you can you can uh you, you know, you can make it work in any light, really. But yeah, you've got to watch your backgrounds. Again, there's no Photoshop. There's no messing around with the background on that. you just got to pick your spot nice and clean, watch your backgrounds. and mm. Amazing. Oh, look, this is you and me cooking. Um, yeah. Did we catch I think, that? I think I must have caught that one. It's quite a big one, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> that was going to die, isn't it? No, look at us grubs. Yeah. <laughs> you probably cooked it. Absolute hobos. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. What a journey, my dear friend. Yeah. What a journey. Been some time. That was really cool. No, I enjoyed it. It's good. And it was it was nice to see the other photographer uh, as opposed to um as opposed to just the news days newspaper yeah. days where we yeah. grew up and how different we've become yeah how different we've become and how different the world's become as well it's it's, it's a different place now to what it was and um and the whole and that news industry is very different as well so yeah i mean we've both um, we've both been, changed in years totally haven't we so yeah i mean there's there's obviously there's still some great photojournalists out there but uh in our days, it was such so cutthroat, and you know there wasn't many bad photographers out there getting a job. There was there was just some astounding photographers that we. Yeah, you had to be good, or you you just didn't make the grade at all. You were gone, so yeah. there was no chances, were they? No, which is good. That made you, you know, they made you what you are, and made me what I am. You you know you you learn. You have to learn quickly and do the job. Yeah, I wouldn't be half the film industry photographer I am if it wasn't for all that 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 background and training. And um, you know, I still shoot exactly the same way as what I did then. And you know, and I, exactly what you are. You know, we're storytellers. It's that's mm. first and foremost. And, and I think that ground that background that we had in you know shooting uh, new stuff makes you 
act quickly, assess the situation you're in very, very quickly. So you know what you've got to get out of it and you know where you've got to be to get that. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you only get one chance at it. So you've got to make it count. That's very true is, is, uh, is knowing where to be to capture it. And, and, you know, once you can feel where you need to be, then the other stuff can be refined and that's when mm. you can concentrate on, on making beautiful images. And, uh, yeah. I have to say you've made some beautiful images. I, I can't wait to see more and everyone, you've got to go and check out Simon's Insta because there's a lot more shots on there than, than what we've just got here. And, um, and it'll make his son happy too, because he's trying to like teach you social media, right? Yeah. It's never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lost cause, mate. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard. Social media is hard work. It's, yeah, it is. You know, it takes a bit of time and, uh, yeah, there's little tricks around it and yeah. Yeah. I'd but you know, out. for, hmm. for everything that everyone says about, about social media, I think it's a really great platform for us to share and, um, you know, this is part of the whole YouTube thing for me is I want to share photographers stories and, and, you know, what techniques are willing to, to give up. And, uh, I got to thank you for, for being with us today. And it's, sure, have you got anything you. to say to anyone, any aspiring wildlife or bird photographers out there of what, you know, no, you just stick with it. I mean, you can go through the basic rules, you know, the, the eye's got to be in focus, um, gear it around that and yeah use the best gear you possibly can good sensors and, and good lenses and just keep at it you know just get as close as you can and relax and yeah and try and think out to, to go for different stuff there's some amazing books out there with you know which, which will give you inspiration as well but try and look for different things think about images plan them ahead and don't just sort of go wandering around with the camera and hope to, to bump into something actually plan do a bit of planning that's a really good tip, actually, because I, I think that a lot of people probably think, including myself, that you just turn up to a spot where you know that there's activity and you're going to mm -hmm. ping something off. But if you actually go there with the right lens choice, because, you know, as you were saying before, you can't be a distraction. You have to be set, be ready. Um, so that yeah. before and, it's, and a lot of it's about the bird's welfare as well. You don't want to sort of, you know, go crashing into a nest site and think, oh, that bird's nesting. I'm going to wait until it comes off its nest. You've got to, you've got to look after the birds as well. You can't go, you know, upsetting them. So gear it around that and, yeah, just take your time and plan a picture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, plan a picture and and have respect for uh, the habitat. Protect the critters and where they, where they live yeah. in yeah 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 so thanks buddy like i said you know it was such a great catch up with you and to learn about your life away from the high octane news days and and look at some beautiful beautiful images of birds no it's been great i absolutely enjoyed it cheers cheers mate well team they are some incredible, incredible photographs. And it's a side of my buddy Simon, which I hadn't seen before. So it was great to catch up with him and great to see these images and also get a few tips. So I'm going to go out and give it a crack. Hope you guys do as well. And uh, if you can, please subscribe and ding the bell so then you can get notified next time we're up and running. All right. Have a great day. Cheers.